Hi, we're here at the uh, Top Gun High Pie Shop, right at the foot of the uh, Oceanside Pier. Rich asked me to uh, do a little thing on the what I call the tin analytics for pier fishing. We'll do that before we eat our apple pie and have our coffee. We are at the Top Gun house, the original house used in the Top Gun movie. And years, a few years ago, they moved it down here to the foot of the uh, Oceanside Pier. And just this week, they've opened up where they are selling pies at this place called the High Pie. So it's a Top Gun house high pie shop. And so we're having some uh, apple pie and some uh, goodies and some coffee. I think maybe the reason they just opened it, it's getting close to uh, the opening of the new Top Gun movie. So it's kind of an interesting time to be visiting and we made sure we got here right at 12 so we could be the first ones inside. A while back I wrote what I call the 10 analytics for pier fishing. And we thought, well, since we're going to be at the Top Gun place, maybe we can have the Top analytics at the Top Gun place. So these are 10 things that I think are very uh, very important uh, if you're going to pier fish. First one, and very important, is to remember that successful fishermen on piers, for the most part, fish close to the pier. The pier acts like a natural reef. The pilings are all covered with mussels, they have little shrimp on them, they have little crabs on them, and the fish come up to feed on that. And the f small fish that feed on them also provide fish, fish are also food for the larger fish that come inside. So right around the pilings is often good. Other fish like to use the pier as shelter because basically a fish is either attacking other fish or being attacked by fish. And so they're trying to avoid getting eaten by another fish or they're trying to eat a fish. So they, the protection of a pier is really good. So instead of casting out a long ways from the pier, fish close to the pier. That's where most of the fish are. The exceptions to that might be shaw rays, the sharks and rays. A lot of times they're out in deeper water. Or some of the pelagics that move through the water, such fish like Pacific mackerel, Pacific bonita, similar fish like that, maybe even yellowtail. They're more traveling back and forth. So they're different than the fish that are right by the pier, the croakers, the perch, the sargo, the opali, the bass, all those type of species. The second, the second analytic is what type of pier is it? If it's a sandy shore pier, especially in Southern California, you are gonna catch more fish because a lot of the fish that you catch on a sandy shore pier, such as barred surf perch, such as um, short uh, uh, spot fin croaker, yellow fin croaker, a lot of the species are schooling species. So a lot of the surf area fish, which are in bigger schools, will populate that area, so you catch more of those, but most of them don't get very large. So more fish, quantity-wise, maybe not quite the same quality-wise. Whereas if you're fishing a rocky shore pier, there aren't too many in Southern California, but there are some in Northern California, piers like Trinidad, or a pier like in San Francisco Bay, like the Elephant Rock Pier, or if you go far north, almost to the Oregon border, Crescent City, the piers there are by rocks. And if you get rocky shore piers, you're going to catch rocky shore fish. So you're going to get perch again, some really nice perch, but you also may get cabazon, you may get lingcod, other large fish like that. So I've always said sandy shore piers are better for number-wise, a lot of fish, but maybe not quite as big a fish, whereas the rocky piers you're going to get a better quality of fish. Th third thing, I always say to look for mussels on the pier. Southern California piers, most oceanfront piers, are going to be covered with mussels. That's a great sign because those fish are going to come in and eat on those mussels. Those mussels are covered by um, little crabs, they have shrimp on them, and of course the mussels themselves the fish will feed on. And so if they have lots of mussels, probably the fishing will be better. If they don't seem to have any mussel for some reason, some cities now take the mussels off because they think that the weight of the mussels 
is hard on the pier. Um, or if it's a pier, sometimes in a bay, it is not a lot of salt water. Uh, sometimes you won't see any mussels. It's not going to be as good fishing around the pilings if you don't have mussel. So if you see mussels around up here, be sure to check out the piling. Fourth thing, very important, the, the best fishing time typically is in the morning and in the evening. There's a time when it's not totally dark, but you're transitioning to the light. And so the dawn is a really good time. The fish start biting. Same thing happens at night. You're getting ready to have the dusk moving into dark. And the fish seem to bite in the early morning bite and the late evening or early evening bite. In the middle of the day when it's real bright out, they don't feed, feed quite as heavy. And they're more wary because that's the time other fish can be hunting them out for food. So the fish are a little bit less wary, more biting early morning, early evening. So if you can fish those hours, you don't always have a choice. But if you have a choice, try those two hours. Another thing, always use high quality bait. Today bait's expensive, whether it's anchovies, squid, mussels, um, pile worms, blood worms, lug worms, um, ghost shrimp. Typically nowadays it's expensive. Keep a bait uh, cooler with you, with ice in it, and keep that bait fresh. Not only is it good for your money, for your wallet, but also the bait's better quality, and the better quality bait is going to catch more fish. If you take bait and you just lay it in a plastic bag and lay it on a pier, and it's sitting in that hot sun for two or three hours, it's going to soften up and not be nearly as good a bait. Next thing, keep records. I have records of every fishing trip back in 1962. What day did, what was the date that you fished? What were the hours you fished? What kind of fish did you catch? What worked? Was you using bait? Were you using artificial lures? What was it, you know, and maybe put in there the uh, high tide, low tide, to get an idea, and even how tight, how high the high tide was for the water movement. I guarantee you, after doing that for a period of time, you'll be able to go and look at your record and say, ah, this pier in August, during these hours, typically produces these fish. And it helps you tremendously making the decision where to go fishing, what time to go fishing, what kind of bait, and what kind of fish to seek out. Records are really important. And they're not hard that I put them on three by five cards. I, I tra transfer that information to the computer, but you can just keep three, three by five cards is all you need to do. Next thing, be mobile. Don't be stuck like glue to one spot on the pier. That spot may not be seeing any fish biting. Across the pier on the other side, or maybe farther down, farther out on the pier, or closer into the pier, maybe where the fish are biting. As you're walking out on the pier, when you first get there, note where the anglers are catching fish. If they're catching fish in one area, but you want to go to another area and try it, and you're not catching fish, go back to that area. Don't crowd into their spot, but fish close by, that's probably where the fish are biting. Next thing, good tides. I've always said two hours before high tide to two hours after high tide is the best time to fish, especially if it's a sandy uh, surf pier in Southern California. If you have a, a pier that's a long pier and it's got a sandy shore pier, tides are very important because a lot of the favorite fish like croakers, like perch, are inshore and, those, and they, they, they feed on the on, mainly on the uh, surf uh, um, crabs and stuff, sand crabs, that are stirred up by that high tide. So fish those high tides. If it's a real long pier and you're out there to fish for shark or something and you're out at the end, not quite as important. But it is important to have good water movement because some fish like a certain water movement, like perch. They like two and a half to three feet of water movement. And so you need to look at your high tide, your low tide, subtract the difference, see what kind of water movement you got going on. And if it's a good water movement, that's probably a good time to go fishing. Another thing, red tide. If you go out to the pier and it looks like really dirty, red colored water, um, I would, it's best just to avoid it, go to some other pier if available. If you can't go to some other pier, go ahead and fish there. But what happens is those organisms come in, the red tide organisms, they take up, they, they use all the oxygen. There's not as much oxygen for fish. And so most fish tend to move away, move out of that area if they can to a better oxygenated area. So probably if you have high red tide, it's not gonna be good fishing. 
like I said, sometimes you don't have any choice. You've got a local pier, the only place to go, it's got red tide. Okay, so I'm gonna fish there. You may not have as great a success, but you'll fish it. But if you can go to a different pier, go to a different pier. Last thing, and this is really critical important, there's no guarantees in fishing. You can have the best rod and reel, the best tackle, the best bait, the best time, all the things that just align perfectly, you think, and you go out there and the fish aren't biting, or they're not there. Uh, same time, sometimes you got everything wrong, and you happen to hit the pier right, and all of a sudden you're catching fish. There's no guarantees. However, even though there's no guarantees, if you do have the right bait, if you do understand what kind of bait the different fish want, if you do understand how to present that bait effectively, your chances of catching more fish are dramatically increased. So yeah, there's no guarantees, and don't get too discouraged if you don't catch any fish, but that's still, you should still study how to fish, what the fish are, what they're biting on, what the best baits are, and the correct tackle, and you'll be more of a master angler. Even master anglers don't catch fish every time. I still get skunked occasionally, but it's very rare that I get skunked because I do know the basics. So learn the basics, they'll help you be a good angler. That's the 10 Analyx, top gun, top Analyx. Okay, we hope that you watch our pier fishing videos. We have two aims. One aim is to educate people how to be better anglers. And secondly, we hope you entertain you a little bit. Hope you enjoy these films, watch the films, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and keep watching.